So I was actually with some surprise that I saw that my talk on micro ultrasound was one of three talks at this meeting. Uh, and uh, there's going to be some overlap because, it, uh, as Neil said, it is early days. The database is limited, but I do believe this is a important and potentially disruptive technology with respect to the uh, current tremendous wave of enthusiasm for MRI imaging and targeted biopsy. And of course, one of the implications of that embracing of MRI is that as urologists, we've lost uh, prostate imaging, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe not a, such a good thing for our specialty. Uh, the one uh, comment that Neil made that I don't agree with is that you do 15 cases and you're an expert. That's like doing 15 robotic prostatectomies. You may be capable, but you are not an expert. And it does, uh, an aspect of this is that all of a sudden you are back in the image interpretation game, uh, which I would say, uh, uh, we haven't been in with respect to ultrasound. There are a lot of subtleties to this. Okay, so uh, uh, Neil really gave a gorgeous introduction, uh, and he taught, it, it is remarkable when you start doing this. You see ductal anatomy. You see these, these virtually microscopic ducts in the prostate. The, the intellectual property, the original research came out of my institution. In fact, I started using this 15 years ago to image prostate uh, xenografts and orthotopic tumors in mice with Stuart Foster, who is the uh, uh, imaging biophysicist in the imaging research group at our place, and this evolved into uh, human applicability. So uh, I go back with it a long time, otherwise no disclosures. So there's room for improvement, and MRI and target biopsy is clearly an advance over systematic but it has limitations, it's not real time. External specialist in the active surveillance setting, the data is starting to accumulate, it has limitations. I'll show some of our data on that momentarily, cost, complexity, et cetera. Uh, here's one study, uh, MRI and active surveillance, 27% false negative rate. These are small volume tumors. They're particularly tumors that tend to be missed. Uh, with MRI. Uh, uh, there's also, I would say, an emerging consensus based on a number of studies that a negative MRI does not preclude the importance of systematic biopsies. And if there's a target, you still need the systematic biopsy. So that's a disappointment. Uh, this is a trial we just published in European Urology a few months ago, which was randomized trial MRI with targeting systematic versus systematic biopsies alone for the one year. Uh, uh, biopsy, and here is the performance of, these are the PIRADS-5, 33% had significant cancer, two-thirds did not. Here are the results for comparison from the precision study for the same PIRADS-5 was 83% versus 33%. So Houston, we have a problem. There is a discordance in the data. We have not been able to replicate uh, the the performance of MRI, this of course particularly in the surveillance population, this is in the undiagnosed population, so maybe that makes a difference. So room for improvement. Neil mentioned the <coughs> Primus score, and as I say, you know, there's subtleties here. To, to learn to identify these things, to not find an abnormality in every patient, because obviously that will blow the specificity dramatically, this takes time. I find, I've now done about uh, uh, close to 100 uh, cases. I learn from every single one of them. Normal is fairly easy to recognize, but there are um, a lot of subtle patterns, but you do acquire expertise with this over time. And this is just one example. This was a guy who had a systematic biopsy, 2% Gleason 6, comes back for his 12-month biopsy, and this, I don't think I have time to show this whole movie, but uh, you know, you scroll through, you see these abnormalities coming up, hypoechoic areas, smudging, cauliflower appearance, you look for areas of hyperechogenicity, and you target those. So there's no fusion, uh, uh, here. So this is where his original core was positive for Gleason 6, and this is where he had a Primus 5 lesion, some smudging, some irregular shadowing, and that turned out to be a Gleason seven prostate cancer. 
Uh, we've also used it to biopsy and evaluate patients post focal therapy or partial gland uh, uh, ablation for HIFU, and this is just one of these. Uh, there's his residual prostate. There's the cavity uh, post HIFU. It is not sham therapy, and uh, again, a directed biopsy. So just in summary, here is the experience with the first 50 patients. 32 were elevated PSA, 18 were previous focal therapy. Negative predictive value, 96%. Positive predictive value, 63%, which is relatively comparable to MRI. Uh, sensitivity for Gleason grade group two or higher was 90%. The one case that was missed was also negative on MRI. And here's how it compared to MRI, which I think is particularly important, because there's a battle brewing. And the battle is between MRI plus fusion plus uh, fusion-targeted biopsy with the technologies that have emerged for that, which involves a radiologist, MR time, at least two visits, with this, which is one-stop shopping. And I think, my experience so far is it gives quite comparable performance to MRI. Uh, here there were 12 cases who had positive biopsies who had both, so the numbers are small, but uh, basically, all the patients who had a positive MRI had a lesion seen on high-resolution ultrasound. Four of the 12 who were negative on MRI had a lesion on ultrasound that was positive for grade group two. So it actually had better sensitivity and comparable specificity to MRI. In our hands, small numbers, validation is absolutely required for this and is ongoing. And there's other studies out there, this is just a summary of them, that essentially have reported the same type of thing, that the sensitivity, which is not so great with MRI in this surveillance population, was maintained. So in my view, this is potentially disruptive technology uh, and I think a, a welcome challenge to the MRI fusion-targeted world and uh, the data is going to be emerging rapidly as this gets disseminated. Thank you very much.